Hello, I'm Rick, and this is Dave. Leslie. I'm Dave. <laughs> and How you going, uh, we are going to just sit back and have a bit of a chat because that's what we do. We haven't caught up for a little while, and we lined up the old Skype, and we can have a chat. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sure all my Australian guests know who Dave is. <clears throat> Baby animals, <clears throat> Jimmy Barnes. Man, the list goes on and on. Um, for American friends. You can look him up. I'm going to point out that Dave actually and his band, his little rock band, The Baby Animals, supported uh, Van Halen back in 91, was it, Dave? 92, I think it was. 92, actually. 92, yeah. the yeah. Unlaw Unlawful Cardinal Knowledge Tour, F something like that. Tour, yep. Yeah, that's the easy yeah. way. That's the easy way. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Man, I've got to say, one of the best guitar tones I ever had, you guys had um, the 5150 heads when you came back. I remember you had three wet, dry, wet type setup like dry wet yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and after that tour I had the option of buying one of those I was working at a music store and I borrowed it and mm. I actually that was the first time I used a tube power amp with my ADA setup at the time and oh my god I discovered the resonance knob on that and that was the thunder that was missing for me so uh, yeah go, go, go. Yeah. yeah man that air movement absolutely absolutely <laughs> so Dave um I was having a look through your little through your bio online, and it's like, man, I've, I've known you for a long time. Um, how can I start a bit of a chat with you? First thing I saw was it said that you've been playing guitar since 1973, which happens to be the year I was born. So um, I thought maybe you could start off by telling the viewers how mm. it came to be about that you started playing the guitar. 73, my goodness. Yeah. That's like how many years ago? Well, lots. Lots. Yeah, a lot of years ago, man. Um I just, yeah, I really loved the guitar. My family were always musical, and we used to watch programs like Bandstand and stuff like that in the 60s, and you know, I was born mid-60s. Um, yeah, it's, uh, there was an, a, a program called GTK on the ABC, Getting to Know, and it had black and white film. That's where I, that's where I first saw Eagle Rock, and there was, uh, I think Sunbury was around, sort of around that time. There was a lot of footage from Sunbury put, uh, like, played on that episode. On, on that particular program, and I'm like, I want to do that. That looks like a whole mess of fun, you know. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So now uh, you, you know, st standing on the sorry, sorry, brother, you're standing right, on the uh, on the lounge room table with a tennis racket, singing American Pie at the top of my lungs. My mum, my mum's going, "You get down, you get down from there." So he's, she, I guess, you know, they they figured I was trying to tell them something. So yeah, it's very Got similar. I I was into. I had the old. Tennis racket was jumping up on the bed at a young age as well, and the my folks ended up getting me one quite young age. But I never learnt to play it till high school. But uh, carry on, uh, mate. Sorry to interrupt. Mm, I've still got that old guitar. Have you? So, uh, a little little three quarter acoustic uh, nylon. It comes in handy sometimes. And you go, ha! Ah, we could throw some nylon on that. I've used it nice. in ads and stuff like that as well. It's yeah, it's still still valid. Yeah, valid piece of plywood. Never have too many guitars, mate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, you, you just mentioned Eagle Rock in, in all of that. And mm. i got to say, I've got a distinct memory of going to the movies um, and Eagle Rock was used on an ad. I'm assuming it was Eagle Jeans, something like that. And I can remember, I was quite young, it was before I played guitar, just hearing that sound, just that down, 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 and just... Think, oh my god, that is cool! I want to do that. This so, is badass. Uh, yeah, it, it was, totally, totally, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just watching the film clip, and you know the way they just they, they carry on, and just that stuff. And just think, man, being a gang—it's like a gang being a band. Oh, that'd be that's cool. It's really cool. And evidently, it still is. And it totally is a gang, isn't it? It's kind of yeah. a us against them kind of attitude. <clears throat> yes, it's good. Yeah. But it's better that it's when it's us against them as opposed to us against us. Which yeah. Which can be occasionally, but anyway. Of course, of course. It's, yeah, like any friendship or relationship really, isn't it? it has <laughs> ups and downs, mate, ups and downs, yeah. <laughs> so speaking of which, um, Baby Animals, which you're most known for, <clears throat> um, how did you guys <clears throat> come about? You probably told this story a million times, but... Um, yeah, it gets better every time. Does it? Okay, yeah, let's, yeah, let's yeah, hear the uh, 2000 and, 2019 version, mate. 2019 version. Um, I was working at this agency in, in town um, in Sydney, just delivering posters and contracts and stuff like that when I was a kid and had, um, or not kid, younger, I was 25 or something. Um, and the word came out that 
Rose Tattoo were auditioning guitar players. And I I thought, oh, because I'm a bit of a, you know, I was a Tats fan. And it was, I think, the Beats of a Single Drum album was uh, the album that they had just released, the one with Suddenly on it, you know, and uh, ballads. And they were... They, they were going together, going out on tour supporting ZZ Top. Cool. And the word came out that they're auditioning. And I'm like, you should, you should go for it. I'm like, well, what's the, what's the, what are the chances? You know, I've got a blonde mullet and no tattoos, like a <laughs> Brian Maddox style. <laughs> but I'll go and have a hit. I'll go and have a hack anyway, right? Well, have, have a hit. So um, I went to their, their management office and they gave me a CD, uh, a cassette, sorry, with a little note with the songs to learn on it. So I took it home, learnt these, learnt the shit out of these tunes and then went to um, a place called Music Box in Petersham where they were holding auditions. I don't think it's there anymore, near Petersham Railway Station. Um, and went in one Saturday afternoon and they plugged me into this. They said, don't worry about bringing amp. we got amps here. So it was a, I think it might have been a JMP. It was a, it was a 100 watt Marshall top. Nice, nice. Plugged into that. Wound it up, went, all right, off you go. So I gave it I gave it my best shot, you know. Um, but the bass player of Rose Tattoo at the time was this fellow named Andy Sichon. And he was engaged to this lady, Adrian Driscoll, who was John Woodruff's personal assistant. So, you know, and I, I being, uh, you know, an Oz Rock fan and everything like that and, and wanting to you know, be aware, in, be industry aware, I knew exactly who Woodruff was. He managed the Angels and Johnny Diesel, and I, I didn't know that they were that they were engaged. I didn't know that Andy had anything to do with 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 eighty. I just he's a he was just a mate, you know. And so sure. I went back for a second audition, um, and obviously didn't get didn't get the gig. But I had a rapport with with Andy, so he's a good guy and. I was playing in a, a Cold Chisel tribute band, Swing Shift, at the time, and Andy used to come and see us play and just come and hang out. So it was cool. He's a, he's a nice fella. Um, he's living in New York playing with Billy Joel at the moment, you know. I know, yes. Yeah, he's, he's badass. He's a, a monster musician and a monster guy. And um, anyway, so we became mates. And so when Susie came from London back to Australia, um, she hooked up with Woodruff Management to try and get something going and everything like that. And they were just looking for people. And through Andy, my name got thrown into the into the hat. And I went along and um, had a play in early September 1989, nearly 30 years ago. Whoa. 30 years ago, 30 years ago next month. And um, got the gig, which was kind of cool. Awesome. Yeah, yeah the awesome. minute I heard, you know, it's funny just go, going to Rose Tattoo, Knowing that I probably wouldn't get the gig, you know, but I thought there's – why not? Why not go and do it, you know what I mean? And, yeah. and, just, and just see because you just got to go out there and have, have a crack, you know. Totally, totally. Yeah, yeah. Now, mate, things happened pretty quick for you guys, didn't it? Because you are talking – 89, did you say this was all about? Mm, yeah, yeah. September 89. And it was like 91 or so where you guys were just – I remember seeing you guys on the ARIA Awards and it was – you were on tour. What was that? Ninety two. You were on tour with that Van Halen, I believe. Ninety two, I think. Yes. Yeah. We'd yeah. been up all. We'd been up all night. Oh, I can remember. It was just beyond a joke. Every award you guys were nominated for everything, and I, every time it had cut to you guys, you guys would just laugh and go, "Seriously?" Oh, yeah. we, were, we were delirious. Yeah, yeah. I we'd, bet. We'd, I bet. We'd, we'd played in Boston that night, and we we're in this. Uh, we'd gone out after the gig, and then got picked up. Had a, gone back, had a shower, got to this TV studio in. I don't know because of the time difference. 5.30 in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning, something like that, delirious, you know, and there's champagne there and all this sort of stuff. And so what are you going to do, you know? Go, go get drunk on national television. That's of what course. you're going to do. Of yeah. course, of course. Now, um, and it wasn't, as, as I mentioned, it wasn't that long afterwards when you guys uh, toured with Van Halen. I mean. Yeah, that was during that time, actually. I'm yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, 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 uh, it, yeah. But, I mean, what an amazing thing to get picked up so quickly. Um, yeah. Well, How did that happen, know, mate? That's just, good, that's just good management, you know. I mean, Susie, had, we pretty rapidly put a bunch of, of, of pretty cool songs together and we had good management, so they had a plan. There was a strategy, you know what I mean? Yep. Um, because of that, we were able to get pretty high-profile um, domestic supports so that when Angels went out, we, you know, we were lucky enough to be on that Dogs Are Talking. The B-side of Dogs Are Talking was three unsigned 
acts that, that they took out on tour, which was I've got that here somewhere. I've got that so here somewhere. So much fun, man. Yeah, that was yeah. so much fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. We all were in the one high ace bus, the three uh-huh. support acts called the Ugly Bus. It was okay. Like a co- it was a coaster. Yeah. yeah. Man, it was it was mental. So much fun. Wow. But there was just the way it was manoeuvred and, and placed that the band was sort of it was it was clever you know it was a strategy and um it worked they had a plan and they the, the plan was fulfilled it was good you know yeah yeah, yeah. so we well, got a, I, you know we got a label and all that sort of thing yeah i did uh happen to see you do a bit of a talk recently at the uh, melbourne guitar show so i uh, i remember you saying about how when you guys first went out playing with with the angels and that hey your sound really hardened up because you were getting a bit of a hard time from the crowd and um by the end of that it kind of really hardened you guys up and i mean you guys were in my book one ah one of the last great aussie hard rock bands um <laughs> and i guess there's nothing like touring and, and having that kind of energy thrown at you to give it back yeah, at them, huh? yeah. well you, you know you throw a female front at anything in front of a jimmy at like a, a jimmy barnes crowd in sunshine in victoria yeah you're gonna you sink or swim, man. You, yeah, you really do, you know. And and yeah, we've found that we just have had to kind of toughen up. Occasionally, the crowd would just boo. Yeah, you know, the Barnsley crowds were just unrelenting, just Barnsley. So you know, we'd have forty minutes of music that we played in like twenty five minutes. <laughs> just, wow. Just kept you know, just I don't know. There's nothing you can do. Just play the yeah. songs. Just get the fuck out of here. Yeah. But, and. I, you know, it gave us a kind of it that tempered us, you know? Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, do you remember what kind of gear you were using back then? Hmm. Um, depending on which week it was. Yeah. I reckon, I think a lot of it was a JCM 900 and a, and a Studio 50, Calibre 50 boogie head. Wow. Think of the ones. I think it's a Calibre 50. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with the two channels are clean, a really clean, clean. And a really dirt, dirt. Uh-huh. And nothing, in, nothing in between, unfortunately. But they were great. I mean, boogie cleans are amazing cleans, you know. Yeah, but yeah. Between the two of them, and then the Marshall sat in the middle of those two sort of things. So I put it all on at once and just filled a lot of filled a lot of holes. Okay. Um, Susie was Susie had my other boogie, which was a Mark Three, I think Mark Three combo. Yep. Um, and then we just yeah just started getting Marshalls, and then I got an ADA. And did that sort of thing, and then ran it through the back of the Marshall, uh, through the power amp. Uh, I went through oh, lots of different stuff, man. But pretty much primarily Marshall until we got those fifty-one fifties, you know, like uh-huh. we were talking about, like we were talking about before. Like, um, yeah, when we came back from touring in the states, and the album had done really well here, and they're like, "So you can use whatever you want. What sort of backline do you want? You can use whatever you want. I'm like, <laughs> whatever I want." Okay, so I'll have three quad boxes. Susie had two quad boxes. Eddie, the bass player, had like a PA. No wonder, no wonder, Sue's lost her voice. I mean, God, it was just so, you know, so loud, but it sounded incredible. It was amazing. Yeah, cool. I still had yep. the Marshall in the middle. So the fifty-one fifties were wet either side, really clean or really, really dirty. And then there was this Marshall. The Marshall was the dry. By that that stage, I'd uh, acquired a, a JMP. And so that was just like this tree trunk dry up the middle, you know. Cool. It sounded cool. great. It, that rig played me. You know, yeah. you hit it and it'd be like, yeah, it was immense. It was wow. Great fun. I'm yet to try the wet dry wet. I've been a stereo kind of guy for a while, um, mm-hmm. but not wet dry wet yet. Um, I was tempted to try that when I was doing the Queen show, but I ended oh, up going yeah, Kemper yeah. because I wanted to pull the, the Brian May tone. But um, end up going Kemper, um, which was good for its purpose. And I, I believe you're, you're an Axe Effects guy these days. Yeah, I use an AX8. But speaking of the Kemper, and when you play that Queen show, we went and saw you at Lazotte in Newcastle. The tone was magnificent. It was fucking spot on. Oh, man. thanks, mate. Thanks. Yeah, thanks. yeah. Was it, what is a fryer? Was it the fryer in the, into the front of the Kemper? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I had um, the fryer treble booster on my strap like brian may did uh, oh, greg was okay. actually yeah greg was sending me those to beta tests before he'd send them to brian oh. uh, wow was, yeah yeah so um i'd, I'd have uh, all these different versions he's like which one do you do you like best I'm like, man i'm playing it into a modeler but it still worked it it had to be the first thing in the chain to get right. the roll off to be able to 
roll back your, your volume to get the Sorry. clean. So the guitar probably. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it had to be on your strap. If you have a look at Brian, he actually has um, a little. He has a little one on his strap, and that's how he gets his clean sounds. Just just winds back. Um, but yeah, I spent a bit of time dialing that. Yeah, that's all. Awesome. Well, it worked. Yeah, oh, cool. It's Thanks, mate. Thank you. So, good. Yeah. so, so speaking of, of tribute shows, uh, you quickly mentioned before you uh, played Ian Moss in Swing Shift, the Cold Chisel tribute. I did. Band. <laughs> yeah. How did you find that, mate? Was that? Um, yeah, <clears> probably we, the. Probably the best guitar lesson I've ever had. Yeah, I bet. It is, isn't yeah. it? Having to learn stuff, note for Having note. To learn stuff, especially yeah. his stuff. Yeah, that, yeah. The vibrato, the phrasing, the tone. I mean, yeah. that guy, you know, Mossy's the, the whole package. He's everything about him. He's just so Absolutely. Musical, you know, so musical. And so having to emulate that, even though we emulated it probably, you know, a tone and a half down, um, it was just, it was good fun. And it, it just, it, it at least gave us something to do. We you know, we played a lot. The band gigged it and toured a lot. You know, so it was it was good fun. But I didn't yeah. that I jumped from that into Baby Animals because I didn't want to do that the rest of my life. You know, sure, I sure. Possibly help it. I mean, it was great, yeah. but yeah. it's yeah, yeah. Cool. Were, were there any other musos of note playing in that 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 I would know of? Or um, Andy Payne uh, sang and. Um, I, I used to play – I played with him in a band called Newbreed when I first moved to Sydney in okay. 85 or so. Yeah. And he's, and he's still active. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. He plays, he's playing with Shannon these days, playing with Shannon Noll. Shannon Noll, cool, yeah. which yeah, you did for yeah. a while too, yeah? My old boss, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool, cool. I'll play, I'll play with everybody, man, far away. I, I saw that. I didn't realise you'd played with so many idol winners when I had a look at, uh, quickly at your, your bio on, on, your, um, on your website. And I was just like, oh, I didn't know you'd done that as well. That was kind of lucrative for me back in those time. You know, I um, I got a, a few songs away as well. I got a couple of songs placed on those records. Nice. Um, and played on Shannon's second album. Um, did most most of the guitars on that, or a lot of the guitars on it. Some Melbourne guys did some as well. But it was it was it was work. You know, it was good work. And then I went out and and did the band for about 110 gigs. And these were these were good gigs, man. They, they were full houses all the way around. Nice, Great PA, nice. you know. Yep. Crazy, crazy band. The yeah. band were crazy, but cool. Yeah, we survived. Yeah. Uh huh. Mate, before you were talking about your, your wet dry wet rig, rig uh, that was about around about the time that we met, and we were just yes. talking about this before we went on air. That um, we actually had an awesome jam. Um, we went bungee jumping. I saw you at the playroom, the infamous playroom at the Gold Coast. We ended yep. up meeting after the show. You came back to my place. No, we went out that night, and it was the next night that well, next uh, ne- yeah, next day we went bungee jumping. Yeah, and squash. then we were so with squash. That's right. Yeah, squash took us out. Yeah, yeah, and I was. We were both so buzzing after that that you came back to my joint. We jammed until someone came and turned the power off at my uh, at my. <laughs> side of my, my wall uh, on the house there um like three in the morning four in the morning or something but uh man that was an epic jam and one thing i remember about that most of the time when you're jamming with people they're trying to impress you with their best licks and you know all their rehearsed stuff but i can remember throwing a whole bunch of just riffs that we could sort of come up with into notator logic and a, and a little um sequencing setup i had in my bedroom and um you said there's one rule you just have to grab anywhere on the guitar. As soon as you know where you are and you're familiar with the pattern, you have to have to go somewhere else. And you just had to grab for notes. And man, both of us were coming out with some really cool stuff doing that. And I think it just goes to show, you know, just the ego thing. Like I said, a lot of people want to show you their, their best rehearsed licks, but this was totally no. As soon as you know where you are, bam, let's let's change. Go somewhere else. Go right. somewhere no, else, yeah. No lounge room licks. Yeah, yeah yes. that's exactly right. So, mate, <laughs> I wanted to ask you, how do you how do you view the fretboard? I realise everybody's different um, in how they view the fretboard. I wanted to up my knowledge a few years ago and I started asking mm. everyone, and everyone was completely different. How do you go yeah. about it? That's a good question. Yeah. I look uh, chords. I look at chords. Chords, okay. Shapes. Yep, yep, yep. Triads, um, inversions. Just look at shapes. I can, I can see it now. Just shapes everywhere. Sure, sure. Yeah, bits, so bits of shapes. So you know, say one one three chord shape with a different bass note can become a completely different chord. Can become a completely different color. Yep. But a lot of I I try and work a lot of yeah triads. I guess. Okay. 
Yeah. 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 So are you familiar with what they call the cage system? Is that, which is based around C, A, G, E, and D chords. So if you know how to play those chords, those chord shapes and move oh, it up and down the fret board. For? Yeah, right. yeah. That had me stumped when I was <clears throat> a lot younger trying to work out the fretboard. Everyone kept seeing this cage system come up and I was like, what is that? Some like box oh. thing? I didn't quite understand what it meant. Yeah, yeah. It's something that there's a few different ways that people look at it, and that's that's a good one. And it sounds like you're kind of doing that. Right. So, okay, they're just different versions of like, yeah, you just move your C, but then if you you move up and. Okay, that so becomes, if you were to play. That your, that, there's your tonic, there's your third. If you were to play an open C chord, there's, yep. there's a major scale based around that. If you play a C, but as an A shaped bar chord, just up a few frets, there's another shape in around that. And if right. you go up and play a G-shaped bar chord, which is kind of awkward to do, that kind of gets you into that pentatonic shape that everybody falls back on the first one. Yeah, and right. then there's yeah, another one, what, E, yeah, yeah, which is just up, and yeah. So yeah. it sounds like that's kind of what you were doing. Kind of what I did, but I, I yeah. didn't know that I was doing it. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly, way, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Ah, As I caged. said, mate, caged. Everyone's different. Yeah. Everyone's different, yeah. Mm. I thought it, yeah, I thought it meant some sort of sh box or cage or something that you'd like a, a um what you call it like a a blueprint of something yeah which yeah. i guess it is but i didn't know it was named after the chords yep yep, yep. Yeah. that's that's totally yeah. what it stands for yeah, yeah. mate I, I did come and see uh your sound check at southport rsl not that long ago it's a bit of a fly on the wall i've been lucky enough to come to a few of your sound yeah, checks man. when you're up this yeah, way yeah. and you're always very accommodating mate I, I thank you for that i really <clears> appreciate <throat> it uh it's a good thing i always wear a black t-shirt because i'm always sort of sneaking around the back of the stage there I didn't last time. I had a white yeah. one, so it wasn't ah, so inconspicuous. Yes. You're very, in, you very conspicuous. Yeah, yes. yeah. But uh, so I got to hear your um, AX8 rig, and I remember you had a Marshall head that you were using as a power amp, mm -hmm. and you had uh, a Marshall four by twelve on its side because you were just using one half of it and keeping yep. the sound down low so it wasn't bleeding up into the into the microphones. Um, and I was, I was standing out front with uh, your sound guy, Ricky, and uh, he showed me, he recorded some of, because he was using the, the Pro Tools venue desk, right, that he recorded yeah. some of you guys, which I gotta laugh, man, your sound check song. What is it? Blues Jam and A, Blues Jam and A, or something, you just <laughs> scream. So it says, let's do it. You don't, no, no. Oh, it, it was so it. funny. So it says, let's do a Blue Jam and A. And you're just standing there. That was the lyrics. You were just yelling out, yeah, Blue Jam and A. But anyway, he's playing that back. And then he time aligned it all. Um, so yes. he had just that, that little bit. And you could just get that little bit of phasing difference, which I wouldn't have thought would make that much difference. But it did when he showed me through the PA, mm. which I got to say, man, that was a kick ass in house PA there. Uh, yeah, Southport it's a good room, that isn't it? Yeah, it yeah, went back yeah. up there soon, actually. Oh, yeah? yeah, cool. With the Angels, cool. yeah, in, in November, I think. Ah, yeah. nice, nice. I have to come along mm. to that. Um, but yeah, just that time aligning of isn't your that? direct signal <clears throat> and the mic signal. Uh, just mm. explaining in case people aren't, don't know what we're talking about. It takes a little bit of time for the sound to move through the air from your guitar speaker to the microphone, but when you're going direct. It's you don't have that little bit of delay straight away. Yeah, mm. so sound guy kind of just moved them in time a bit, and it was great. Bingo. Yeah, yeah isn't it funny? Because it, it, I got it's good that we can use the the mic damp as well, so that on the on the AX8 you can take a tap out anywhere along the, the chain. Yeah. To send it to an, an effect send. Yeah. So there's an effects return as well if you want to, but you, I'd send I send it out so it's got all the fruit running. Okay. Um, choruses, delays, and everything for my own personal use. Yep. Um, except not the speaker sim. So I take a tap out, tap out before the speaker sim um, and put that into the, yeah, around the back of the Marshall. So you're only getting half of, you're only getting one side, you know, the left side or whatever, but at least it's, I've got some stuff running on stage. And yeah, yeah and then I send front of house the whole, the whole picture. And nice. And then Ricky just pushes that up. Um, which makes a yeah makes a big difference, and at least there's some air involved in there somewhere. You yeah, know, yeah, there's yeah. still some there's some speaker movement. Yeah, you know I haven't completely gone to the dark side yet. Yeah, man, your effects sounded great. I really noticed. Um, I I was out front for the first couple of songs, uh, and yeah, your effects out of the the AX8 sounded spot on. 
Um, and the effects in it are good. The delays yeah. are the killer. Yeah, yeah, tape, yeah. Tape delays. And yep. you can get these big ambient kind of stereo things as well just to paint, you know, just to paint a picture. But it, you can tweak it so that it, it'll, it'll still sound big, but it won't. It, it won't wash out what you're trying to do, you know. Sure, yep. It's just, you know, all important. It's not much yep. point smothering your shit in delay and then not being able to hear what you do, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Mate, I, I, just listening to you play over the years, you're getting better. I remember asking you when I was quite young, you know, like, do you think you sort of peaked young? And you said, no, nah, man, you, you, you get better with age. Yeah. And and just, you know, watching you play down at Melbourne and – you're, you're getting better, you know, um, I like to think, but maybe I'm, I'm sort of learning. How do you go about practicing? Do you do something in particular to, to practice? Mm, I did quite a bit of woodshedding today. Most of, a lot of my practice involves learning stuff. Because, you know, when I'm not playing with baby animals and stuff like that, I'm, I'm playing covers, basically, um, doing other either concept shows or doing this other band that uh, I've recently joined called Raw Brit, which is um, – 60s and 70s British rock songs, which is like the best gig ever. Cool. Um, it's um, yeah, it's a really good band, uh, Melbourne Melbourne band. Yep. So so it's that uh, um, learning learning tunes, and so the, a lot of the practice comes because it's you know yeah practice with a mission. But yep. otherwise, I'll just try and sometimes I just get stuck in ruts and practice the same you know pick up the guitar and play the same group little series of stuff that you played the last. 30 times you pick the damn thing up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I get in a bit of a rut. Um, other times, if you if, – or tweaking sounds. I spend a lot of time tweaking. Okay, yep. And so you just, just play, 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 and then, you know, if you if you find a good zone and find a great sound, it'll make you play stuff you've never played before. So Yeah, sure. But sure. still do lots. Still do a shit ton, yeah. And, and you I, – I know uh, recently you told me you, you got a few lessons, a few Skype lessons from um, Doug Rappaport. <clears throat> Yes, I did. What a player. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. man. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Was, that was awesome. I was, I've was i never been so nervous in my life, man, Just watching Doug come down the line through Skype. What, what did you learn from Doug? Hi. What did you learn from Doug? Um, we learned uh, some sort of jazz type of approaches, um, um, Lydian – Lydian dominant kind of scales, variations on sevenths, because I just love playing sevenths. I just love that yeah, whole yep. mixolydian-y kind of thing. But, you know, that – and flattened – flat five, sharp fours, um, little lines and things like that. But, I mean, sometimes I just like – he goes, what do you want to do today? I say, oh, man, I just I just want to sit and watch you play. <laughs> I really – you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Just, you can't not be Get affected your by it. He's so private fucking concert. great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He's – Awesome, and I just yeah, I learned I learned a, a whole ton of stuff. Awesome, to, awesome. How to pull a note, how to bend a string, man. That guy, he just you know, his note production, just like oh, just that approach, you know. Totally. Was, yeah, yeah. yeah he it was, it was I, really good. Mm. I'm gonna say he's one of the new guys that I've seen around on the internet, um, and that's where all the, the new guitar heroes seem to be these days. I'm, I'm finding that I'm finding. Um, mm. Yeah, Doug Rappaport is someone that I discovered on, online through Friedman videos. Uh, oh, mostly. okay. Yeah, and just went, oh my god, how's this guy? Yeah, actually, yeah. Nuno put turn, put me onto him. Cool. It was the, that, the uh, it was the Rip Rap video. He said, "Man, you got to sent me this the, the link." Saying, "Have a look at this guy. He's standing in his fucking bedroom, playing along to this backing track." Right? Fuck, it's mind blowing. And at the end of it, he just does this ripping solo, and then just sort of like goes, ah. And just walks away. You think, but there was one, I was watching it a lot, and there was one time this little banner came across the bottom of the screen. Like that. That um, said, if you're interested in lessons, hit me up at, you know, this email address. So, like, whoo, I was straight, straight there. Yeah. So it was good. Yeah, I, I, I'm not sure how many lessons it was. It was a few years ago now, but it was quite a few. Yeah. 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 Really good. Yeah, very influential. Cool. And, of course, you mentioned Nuno before. Um my American friends probably don't know that uh, lead singer in your band was was married to, to Nuno for quite a while, and mm. um, so you know him quite well. I got to hang out with Nuno through you on my twenty first birthday. Was it your twenty first? It was my twenty first. Wow, you went your thirtieth, man, because awesome. we're two days apart. Wow, okay, yes, yeah, we are. That's right. Yeah, yeah. So it was your thirtieth and my twenty first, and um, I still can't believe it to this day. You know, just like I got, I look at the photos, and I'm just like, 
no way. Oh, I'm having that a beer with a, Uno. Yeah. That was a funny night. That was after the gig, wasn't it? We went to the Yeah, you guys played Seagulls. Duo playing. Right. Yeah, yeah. And you yeah. just took over and we had a ball. It was a great night. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, actually. Yeah. yeah. And then that, we did it all again the next night in Brisbane. <laughs> But um, is there much that you learned from Nuno as a player? Just by being around, just by watching him play, you know. Yeah. We didn't, there was no kind of formal, you know, here's how, this is how you do this or whatever. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, he produced Susie's soul, the first solo record that she did that I played on. And so just being in the studio with him, the way he, the way he listens to stuff, the way he produces, um, yeah, it, like before you can't not learn he can't not be affected by that sort of thing, even though you know he, he's he's a bit of he's a funny guy. There's no doubt about it. He's got a sense of humour. Yeah, I'm I'm assuming it's humour. But there was one time I did this solo on Susan's record, and I'm sitting in there in the in the in the out in the live room, and they're all in the control room. And I'm yeah, it's a little um, intimidating playing guitar in front of that guy, you know. But anyway, I did this solo. And got to the end of the thing, and then they stopped the tape or they stopped the, the Pro Tools at the time. I think it was Pro. No, no, he got. No, we're, we're on, still on tape at that, that point. Yep. And he hits, hits the playback and he goes, uh, That was great. You want to try one with your mittens off? <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's like, ah. Right. I'm like, Devoed. Because it's not, it's not like you can crack the shits and go, Oh, fuck. You do it then. Because. He would, you know. Totally, totally, <laughs> so, totally. But I, you just learn a lot from being around, you know, watching him in the studio. Just watch yeah. the way, man, there's another part. There's, you know, always thinking of parts. Always, you know, the song's never finished. To be, it, I've never seen someone obsess over stuff yeah. that much and just be that focused. Everyone would be like listening to it for the, uh, you know, umpteen billionth time going, I don't know. And he's going, no, nah, man, there, there's, there's something. And there's, he'll just keep pushing, keep pushing. Yeah, good work yeah. ethic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I mean, that's you know, he's got the discipline and he's got the chops to prove it. So yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I was talking to uh, my last guest I had on, and they were talking about um, having my friend Louis Shelton uh, produce them, uh, which is how they got the connection of the electric electrophonic guys. And he was saying when Louis was producing them, he'd say, "Yeah, I think you got a, a better one in you, or you got another one in you." Just that polite way of you know trying to pull out a bit more. Mate, I just had a little flash as you were saying that. You told me a ripper story years ago about the time you had dinner with Frank Zappa and the prank that Dweezil pulled on you the before prank. you met him. Do you, do you want to tell the people that story? Oh, yeah, man. Well, I'm a pretty easy target when it comes to that sort of stuff, <laughs> I guess. But, um, Gold. We, we've been touring with Van Halen and, and Dweezil and Eddie, obviously, you know, Dweezil's a big Eddie fan. And so he was... He was uh, Hanging, and, and so I got a chance to meet Dweezil backstage one time. And so I'm a massive Frank fan. And uh, so the first thing I said was, you know, hi, hey, nice to meet you, man. I'm a really big fan of your dad. And um, if we're, when we're in LA, is there, you know, any possibility that we, I might be able to meet him? I thought, why not? Just put it out there, you know. Can only ask. So, and I, I bust these chops for, you know, Day after day after day, until we we had a we'd had a day off. It was round about the time of the riots, actually the LA riots. We were staying at the Sunset, uh, the riot the the Hyatt on Sunset during the LA riots, and we we had a day off, and we were going to go to Joe's Garage, which is the rehearsal recording facility in the Valley, to have a bit of a jam there, and then go up and uh, maybe you know meet Frank. But a couple of days out of this particular day, a couple of days beforehand, Dweezil comes up to me and he goes, well, dude, you know, we've, I've arranged this uh, this meeting. We're going to come to have a bit of a jam, hang out a bit, and then we'll go up and, you know, meet Frank. Okay, cool. So we get a lot of kind of weirdos, ask, you know, asking to meet Frank and, you know, Frank's, because I think Dweezil called him Frank. You know, his his fans are kind of a pretty, pretty out there, pretty edgy. So we're very conscious of our privacy and um, we'd like we have every a request from everybody that they have to wear a blindfold <laughs> on the way up on the way up to the house and I'm like I'll wear a blindfold I don't care like my intrigueometer is like ping into the red you know 
Like, yeah, man, I'll wear a blindfold. Man. I'll, I'll do anything, man. I'll wear, I'll wear undies on my head. I really don't care. <laughs> just, we'll, let's just do it. So anyway, so um, yeah, we, we, we'd had this jam at Joe's Garage where we did this really weird version of out of White Room, quite out there, like everything in the wrong key and everyone solo at once, but all in different keys. That sort of, you know, Zapparesque yep. Yep. kind of thing. It was more Beefheart, I think. It was more Magic Band. Okay. But um, I got to play the Hendrix Strat that afternoon, which was kind of cool. So it was. It had been a. It had been a I, big day already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, Did, didn't you lick it? I licked it. <laughs> you licked no it. No one was looking. Yeah, oh it. yeah, you licked it. <laughs> well, I just I was sitting there with it. I'm looking at this body, and it's, it's the charred body, right? They put a new neck on it and electronics and everything, but it's this, this charred body. And I'm thinking, this is as close as I'm going to get. This is like, this this is fucking, I don't know, man. It's like a piece of the arc or something. It's, you know, it's, this is, it's a religious thing. It's a religious thing. I wonder, is there any Hendrix left on it? Like, like, like some sort of microbial little bit? Oh, well, if there is, I'm going to get me some. <laughs> I was looking at that. <laughs> Maybe there might be a bit of sweat or something in there. I don't mind, you know. Jimmy probably up there going, yeah, man, you can lick my guitar. It's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't mind. It's cool. Yeah. So um, after we licked, after I licked the guitar, we yeah. finished up. We were starving hungry and um, we turned this corner. It was Eddie and Frank from our band, uh, Baby Animals, bass player and drummer, sitting in the back. I'm sitting in the front with Dweezil on the right-hand side. It's left-hand, left-hand drive car. And uh, we turn this corner and Dweezil's like, looks at me and goes, well, dude, it's time. We go, what? It's time? It's blindfold time. So, okay, cool, blindfold time. Well, do you have a blindfold? No, it's what we usually get everyone else to do is just pull their T-shirt up over their head like so. Kind of like that, right? It's good, good enough for blindfold for me. I thought, okay, that's cool. So on with the T-shirt and up through the um, up through the these hills and stuff like that. We were f- being followed by another car which had Armit, the brother, and Susie in it. And this was like this big four by four with lights and one of these speakers. The you know, the kids those days used to have like this CD radio, CB radio with a speaker on it, loudspeaker. So um, we found, we got stopped by this seem, seeming like this checkpoint. You know, the lights shone in through the front window. I'm like, wow, what's going on? You know, and this someone came up to the thing and said, I, you know, we need to identify your passengers and blah 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 blah. Right, which turned out to be Arbit. So we got up to the got up to the gar- up to the the compound, the garage. Got the tap on the shoulder, dude. You can take the blindfold off now so we're in Frank Zappa's garage I'm like fuck man that's like Frank Zappa's garage it's Frank Zappa's toolkit Frank Zappa's bicycle like you know we're fucking Frank Zappa's house man so we walked into this through this doorway that was into Frank Zappa's kitchen where Gail wife was and um I think Diva no Moon I think Moon was was home um and so we walked in, oh, the Aussies are here. Hey, you know, welcome, welcome. Which one's Dave? I said, oh, that's me. Oh, did you have a nice trip up the thing? Everyone laughed. I was the only, I was the only one wearing a blindfold. <laughs> Eddie, and, Eddie and Frank are in the back of the car fucking dying. And I'm sitting there going, is everything okay? Are we there yet? <laughs> like, talk, what a, talk about a sucker. But yeah. I'd do it again, you know. Hey, I'd do it to meet Jeff Beck. Jeff, if you're watching. Totally. Um, Easily, you know, it was it was great, and so we had some dinner. Yeah, Beverly Beverly D'Angelo was at the dinner table as well. She was a guest, dinner guest that night as well. And um, then we went into the utility Muffet Research kitchen and listened to play back of. He was working on the Yellow Shark record at the time, so got to meet Frank and hung out for a bit. You know, did you say that to get into his studio, it like had a submarine? Mm. vaulty kind of like door submarine door an old kind of weird looking submarine door that yeah cool yeah cool. it's pretty cool. yeah awesome the utility man. muffin research kitchen yeah 
<laughs> it was it was great. I mean, I couldn't sleep that night. That was you know we went back home and I went back to the hotel. I, I bet. Just so buzzing, so buzzing. Yeah, yeah. 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 How about um, EVH, mate? Touring with Van Halen. A, I want to know, did you play Eddie's rig? I've seen pictures of you holding the Frankenstein. Um, did you play his rig? And I'm guessing he may have come into the dressing room and had a bit of a jam with you now and then. Do you want to tell us a bit about that? Yeah, lots of um, – Ed, we'd, we'd hung out lots of times, actually. Yeah, it was good. We were just in a little room downstairs with a couple of little PV amps and – you know, bucket of ice cold beer, and they had to just sort of get to the gig and, hey, what's going on? You know, just come and hang out and play, and which was great. They're so, you know, we were so well treated, man. They were such nice, nice fellas. Cool. It was the whole, that whole entourage was it was like a juggernaut. It was like a city. You know, it was like ten semi trailers worth of gear. You know, eight buses of personnel. There was people on that tour that I probably didn't even meet. That were just there was so many people. You know, and it was just. It was a juggernaut. It just, you know, went from city to city. It was a great experience. And, yeah, one night, because um, Matt Bruck was Ed's tech, I think probably still is. Um, business partner, through, I believe. A business partner. Great. Yeah, yeah, He's yeah. He's a nice fella too, Matty. Yeah, yep. yeah. Beautiful cat. Um, and got, yeah, can ask him if I could play Ed's, Ed's rig, you know. Fantastic. Wet, dry, wet. Alex's two boxes. I think Alex had two boxes. There was two underneath the stage that Matt could um, uh, monitor through. Yep. So when he hit it, it just it came from everywhere, you know. Cool. And I plugged in, cranked it up, and it sounded just like me, but really, really loud. <laughs> Isn't it funny? There's no, you know, I was thinking this is the secret now. I got the heart. There's the harmonizer. There's all this, all this wizardry and all this this stuff going on. Yep. I was like, man, there's, it's that it's the stuff. It left is, hand, it is. Left yeah. right hand is the yeah. stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it was great fun. It was really yeah. good. It was it was a little overwhelming. I didn't play for that long. Yeah. You know, like, I felt very exposed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it was awesome. Great experience. So that reminds me, um, you told me not that long ago um, when you opened for Def Leppard and um, was, that, was that Baby Animals? Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you said that Vivian Campbell stuck his head in through the to your dressing room door and said, "Man, I was going to ask you what you were using, but we all know tones in the fingers." That's something, right. Something, something to that, those effects, yeah. And I'm like, coming from Viv Campbell. Thank you, yeah. man. man yeah. That was very cool. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. That was good. We probably only did two or three gigs with them. Yeah. They were yeah nice. They were really yep. cool. Joey came around, said good day, and. And Viv, yeah, yeah, that was Viv Campbell, fucking hell, yeah, man. it was awesome, yeah, yeah, it was really good. Man, you, you, you've done some cool stuff over the years, haven't you? Like, yeah, I've, I managed to kind of um, acquire or amass some some pretty cool adventures. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I'm, I'm touch wood, you know. Yeah, that, I've been, that's I've great, been blessed, man. Actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's been so, good. so, um, what's the what's the one thing nobody ever asks you about that you wish they did? Oh, jeepers. There's a question for you. Mm. I only asked this because I was sitting around <clears> one time with um, Michael Browning, who was ACDC's manager for many years. Mm. Um, he was managing a, a, an artist I, I played with around 2000, early 2000s. And he'd just done this long way to the top um, series on, on ABC. And I was oh. asking him, you know, oh, yeah, how was that? And he said, man, all they wanted to ask me about was, was ACDC. Um, and I say, well, you know, what did, what, did you, what did you want to talk about? He goes, man, that, that's not my proudest thing. He says, I discovered Australian rock and roll, and it wasn't ACDC. And I'm like, oh, really? Tell me more. He said he was walking down the street um, in Sydney, and he heard this sound coming out of a pub. And he's like, what is that? That is the future. And he uh, went and stuck his head in there, and it was Billy Thorpe. And he just went, wow. I'm signing this guy. I'm going to make something of this guy. Uh, and he said, but nobody ever asked him about that. Everyone always asks him about ACDC being right. the manager. Yeah, yeah. So I was just wondering, is there something that people never seem to ask you about? That you go, man, oh. why, why don't people want to talk about that? Nothing springs to mind? <laughs> Nothing really springs to mind. Um, no? No, you, you could have given me a heads up on that one, man. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Stuck okay. a bit on the uh, – yeah, yeah, that's okay, mate. I, I'll leave that one with you. Now, mm. you, you – 
Um, I'll make something up be- between now and the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Made up stories always better, aren't they? Uh, yeah. <laughs> now you said about playing in different acts. Um, now, I a little birdie told me that you were playing in a David Bowie tribute band. That little Bowie are uh, being Dale Ryder from Dale Boom Rider. Crash Opera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, that sounds like a really cool gig, man. It is yeah. a cool gig, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, because I mean, it's the guitar parts are so many and varied, and they're so iconic. I mean, the, you know, the 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 Robert Fripp guitar parts. Yeah, and stuff crazy. Like, no, um, fashion. Yep. Those angular sort of angular weird fuzz things that he does, where you think, man, what were you even? Th- where was that even coming from? I know. You know trying to figure what's what's your approach? Did you just wing it and they just kept like the best one? Because it's funny because if you play it any other way, it's it's wrong. Mm. But you know, if you play it, if you, it's got to be the, the right wrong. Totally. And, totally. You know, stuff like that. The, the Mick Ronson. I got I had an opportunity. To, I've met Rick, Mick Ronson twice. Oh, really? Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, yeah. cool. And so he, you know, he's another kind of hero. I love the the British guys. Yeah, yeah. Um, just yeah, those parts. They're really cool parts. Yeah. For, you know, great parts, great sounds. Really um, innovative, innovative, killer songs. It's it's a really good gig, actually. It doesn't. We don't play that often. But okay. Yeah. It's it's good when it when it happens. It's really good. Yeah. Mate, we just had a little comment there from um, someone I know, Ben from Follow the Fox, and he says he says bring one of your other bands up to the Goldie, Dave. Any plans of ever coming up this way with any other acts? Ah. I was talking to Wano about this a little while ago. Maybe mm-hmm. trying to put. I've got like um. Oh, this another band that we just do Jeff Becky kind of blues rock covers and things like that, Ormond Brothers and thing um, with Laura Davidson, uh, Alex Deegan and Kim May. Yeah. Um, good rock and little four piece, man. It's really good. Um, yeah. Is that the Dave Leslie band? I think it is. I think yeah. that's what it's called this week. Yeah. Okay. Sunday okay. Cool. Cool. Mate, what other guitar players out there? Now you just you just mentioned Jeff Beck, and I mean that guy mm. just has a, a tone like you wouldn't believe. Like you know it's him straight away, right? Yeah. Who's some of the tone monsters out there that you you go, man? I, I just that's the sound. That's the sound. How do I get that sound? You know, who who in your book are the big tone guys? Um, well, there's obviously Doug Rappaport as well. Mm-hmm. You know, there's the the Cream era Clapton. Yeah. Um, there's that that great bit of footage of. Uh, I think it was at the Royal Albert Hall. Um, Cream. I think it was a BBC interviewer interviewing Eric Clapton when he's sitting in front of his marshals there. Yeah, 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 yeah. I've seen that. He's got the yeah. SG. Yeah. You know, so tell me, Eric, how is it that you achieve your woman turn? And he's just he's, he's sitting in front of this marshal. You know, it must be crazy loud. Yeah. And it just sounds so good. And he's that tone thing. Yeah. And I mean that era. That's that's a benchmark for me. Yeah. yeah. That's so so cool. Yeah. Um, no wonder he's deaf. I hear he's deaf as a post these days, Clapton. Yeah, right. Yeah, that yeah. would probably be right. Mm. Yeah. Mm. How's your hearing? Oh, about 20 past eight. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> do, you, do you get the, the tinnitus or? Yeah, you know, I got it. I can hear it now. Yeah. I hear it all the time. I yeah. was talking and to somebody about it this morning. When you talk about it, it gets worse, doesn't it? Because <clears throat> mm, you focus, focus on it. Of it. Mm. Yeah, you focus on it. It keeps me awake sometimes, you know. Yeah. But it was totally worth it. I did. I mean, I played with Electric Mary on the weekend and used my 1969 100-watt Marshall top. Yeah. So that, that didn't help. I had earplugs in and my ears were still ringing, you know. I've gotten that before where um, it's so loud but uh, the earplugs don't cut out the bottom end and mm. the, the, the bass is still distorting in your head just like, Dude, I'm sorry, man. I have to walk off the fucking stage. That just hurts. And it's still a punish, yeah. But it was great. It was so much fun. <laughs> now, Electric Mary, that'd be a blast to play with, man. It is, uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was they just, get some was good playing. players, don't they? It's like a collective they, of really good players. They do. It's a family, you know. And mm-hmm. when someone when someone can't make it, I mean, I was filling in for Pete Robinson, who it's basically Pete. Yeah, you know, it's Pete and Rusty's band. Yeah, yep. the two founding members. Of it. And Pete's, Pete's a great guitar player. I mean, it was great l- learning his parts. And it's good because when you learn those parts, they're panned. 
So it's like, you know, Pete on one side and either Irwin on the other or, or uh, Brett Woods playing with them. And he's Brett's a fantastic guitar player, man. And a yeah. nice bloke as well. He's a stand-up guy. Um, and so you just learn. Just pan the part and go, okay, I'll learn. If it's an old one, it's Pete's on the left. If it's a new one, Pete's on the right. Okay. So learn, just concentrate on these parts. And it's, it's a good play, man. It's a good learn. And um, I got probably about 90% there. I threw a couple of things in the ditch. On the oh, way you, you're going to make it your own. You're going to make it your own, mate. <laughs> oh, yeah, mate. Yeah, you're going to throw things I, in there. I think your song should go like this. Uh, it, it that, depends. I mean, there, there's parts that have to sound like like that. Um, oh yeah, you got it. Yeah, but yeah, then there's, there's other times, you know, just, you got to make it your own a little, you know. <clears throat> well, I didn't intend to make it my own, but evidently it was made my own on a couple of occasions. <laughs> 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 but it was good fun. It was a yeah. laugh, you know. Yeah. No one took it that seriously. Yeah. Missed, missed a couple of cues and things like that. It's a, it's a lot to learn, but it was I bet. great fun. So yeah. much fun. Yeah. And, and you mentioned uh, Irwin being in there, um, also known as Jack Jones, who was one of my favourite mm. players when I first started, man. Um, very influential age. I've got to say my favourite Australian players around then were Jack Jones, as he was known then, Irwin Thomas now. Uh, mm. Yourself, uh, Diesel. Mm. Loved Diesel, Ian Moss. Yeah, they were the Aussie guys for me. Man. Well, I'm in pretty uh, good even, company in that light, i got to tell you. Yeah. That's for sure. Yeah, even yeah Brad, Jack's, Jack's amazing. He is. And you, I remember mm. you played in a group with him back in around like 95 or something uh, called Mushroom Head? Mudhead. 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 Yeah. And you showed me a film Jack. clip, and you guys were all dressed in drag. I Just remember this now. As, as women, yeah. Yeah, classic, classic. <laughs> that was with Gary Gary Beers from In Excess on bass. Mm. Mm. Who was the drummer? Um, I, the guy from Machinations, John, I think John McKay was his name. Cool. I think, I think Machinations started with a drum machine, but then they got a drummer in, and he was yeah. made at Gary's. It was kind of a studio band. We actually didn't do a gig, but we did do a video. Yeah. yeah where we all... We all dressed up as girls. Yeah, that was classic. Absolutely was classic. Funny. Yeah. yeah. Mate, um, not that long ago, you uh, were playing with the Dead Daisies. Pretty damn cool gig. And I believe you, you, you jumped on then just as they were supporting Kiss, yeah? Opening up for Kiss. Yeah, I filled in for uh, Richard Fortas, who had come off a motorbike about a week before or something, and um, just got this call saying, oh, you're busy for the next couple of weeks? Oh, no, I'm not, actually. Cool. Well, we're, you know... They, I, I knew I'd known Dave Lowy, whose whose band it was, okay. from having having done Doc, because Doc, uh, Dave and Doc were, you know, Red Phoenix and mm. the Doc Doc Neeson's Angels. So I was playing I played in that, and um, so I got this call to come and it was a, that was a big a learn too. It was a big week, and then just mm-hmm. got thrown into a couple of days of rehearsals, and then bingo, we're playing Rod Laver Arena, opening for Kiss. Wow. You know, it was really cool, man. It was, yeah. It was, yeah, and a couple of the songs had the voice box in it, the Heil voice yeah, yep, thing, yep, you know, yep. Peter Frampton thing, and I'd yep. never done that before. Me either. You, that's great. It's, it's funny. It's bad for your teeth, but it's oh, really I've heard that. Thing. Like, does it really chatter your teeth? Yeah, yeah, it's loud. It's really loud. It's like wow. a 60-watt driver or something coming up a tube. It's like, oh. the, it's like the, the equivalent of like a vintage 30 coming up a tube, you know. Yeah. And um, Fuck. But when you're sound checking, I sound check it to an empty Rod Laver arena, singing like this thing, doing voice box by myself. Yeah. And that's a moment. That was like, far out, man. Makes you feel pretty alive. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. It was good. Yeah, a lo- lot of fun, that. Really wow. good fun. Wow. Wow. And man. then we just did big, yeah, arenas, you know, opening for yeah. Kiss. And, yeah, got to see Kiss night after night, which is really good fun. Got to, I got to see Kiss sound check, which was pretty entertaining. Yeah. Cool, cool, <laughs> yeah. What other big bands have you played with over the years, mate? Just trying to scratch my head here without looking to um, your website and looking at. Hmm. Well, our first, the first major run that we went on was um, waking up the waking up the neighbours tour, which was Brian Adams that record, the big record. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Can't stop this thing you started and, and yeah. all that sort of thing. And now Keith Scott. Was, Oh, Keith Scott's a bad. I love, man. yeah. That's when I was learning to play guitar and I couldn't do the fast stuff. I was into Keith Scott, man. Him and Stuart Fraser from Noiseworks. 
were the yes. two guys that I could actually work out their solos. And it's just like, oh, I learned that solo off the radio. Yeah. Um, that's really melodic. Uh, that, that's another situation where we were really well treated, really well looked after. And, you know, a couple of times I got a, had a chance to jam with Keith and he's a monster bebop player. He's just like, this rock stuff, man, that's, you know, I do that for bread and butter. I'm, really? I'm into, yeah, he's into okay. like saxophone lines and stuff like that. He's Okay. Yeah, he's better than he gets credit for. We yeah, right. saw him not so long ago. They came through through Melbourne. Yeah. And caught yep. up with Keith afterwards and playing like a demon, man. That whole band. It was pretty much the same band. Different bass player. Okay. Yeah, different bass player and keyboard player, but but Mickey Curry, the drummer, Keith and Brian were the same three guys that we that we toured with like in ninety one. Yeah. Yeah, right. It says a lot about that kind of situation, huh? Yeah. It does, mate. Well, it, yeah. yeah, yeah. Brian mustn't be a douchebag then. He must be a good guy if, if his guy's going to stick around guy. with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Mate, um, now you've played the same guitar for quite a while, uh, the uh, Grabisa Merlin, yeah? Have you been playing the same one all this time or have you got a, a few of those? Um, and you want to tell us a bit about it because a lot of people are probably looking at that guitar thinking, what the hell is that thing? And it's a pretty cool guitar. I do get asked a lot of questions about it, actually. Yeah, it's a good point. Um, I used an electric Mary the other night. Cool. Um, didn't didn't need to change it. It was funny. It's um, yeah, a guy called Frank Grubisa lives in Petersham in Sydney. He's a repairer builder. He's he's built a lot of guitars and um, he used to do fret jobs and stuff like that when he lived in Botany. And uh, I used to just go around and hang out and drink coffee. I could walk to his place for mine, so he's hang out. He's a lovely guy, so we just you know hang out. He'd be like, "Oh, I've got my own design and everything." And so we started knocking up this guitar, and that was probably 23 years ago now. That guitar is, and it's uh, it's a maple maple top book matched book matched maple cap on a mahogany body with a sort of a glue in big long neck tenon that goes all the way all the way to the bridge, pretty much. Okay, and. <clears throat> Sounds killer. It's got a couple of Mick Briley pickups in it. This, uh, this fella that um, – another nice guy. It's funny. I like dealing with people who uh, you can just talk to them about stuff, you know, yeah. get exactly what you want, and they just do it. They do it out of out of passion, you know. Um, yeah, but his pickups in there, both sp- splittable humbuckers. It'll, it'll take anything, this guitar, you know. It'll play any kind of style, E-flat – low, high, whatever, because I was playing an electronic bed one time and I had a 60 and a 60 on the E string that was tuned down to a B Whoa. and the rest were normal. And yep. the guitar, didn't, it didn't even budge, man. You know what I mean? It's sort of like just one of those things. It's a great, it's a really cool instrument. Yeah. Nice, and nice. It's, been, it's, it's probably on its fifth set of frets. It's been stolen. It's been broken. Uh, it's Yeah, it's it's had a life, you know. Yeah. It's yeah. acquired quite a bit of mojo speaking of mojo man you had at uh the melbourne guitar show, show uh your old black strat people would know as the old black strat uh, that you had in the early days um on a few of your, your older film clips um uh, i remember seeing you playing that on the old mtv sessions as well That's the one but here, yeah. there was quite a story behind it because it's now white <clears throat> and it's now white, it's now white yeah um Tell us how it came to be where it is now. And I've got to say, man, it sounded amazing when you were playing it. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. That's good. Yeah. 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 Well, it's it's the only thing that has survived is the neck. It's, that, it's a 79 large headstock neck. Um, the body of that black strap was heavy. It was like a really, it was a se- yeah, 79 thick three bolt neck. Yeah. Kind of late 70s heavy body strap. You know, it sounded pretty thin, actually, um, when you think about it. But, you know, I loved it. I put EMGs. To record, we put EMGs in it. I put some, you know, the two SAs and an eight, I think an 81 was the humbucker okay. in yep. it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, which kind of fixed it up a little bit because yep. the, the stock pickups were, were, were pretty pretty flimsy, pretty thin. Yep. But it, the, the, it had, had a couple of knocks on tour and stuff. So the neck had started to move inside the body, the, the holes. Yep. It was just going out of tune and stuff. And so I pulled the neck off. Frank gave it a, a new set of frets and just – and I forgot to pick it up. We were out on tour or whatever. And it hung up in his workshop for probably 10 years, the, this neck, until I'm down there one time. I'm like, 
it's my strap neck. Yeah, right. Can I have it back? I said, yeah, sure. You know, you want to pay for the fret job? I said, so, you know, um, got this back. And then my friend Squirrel Man uh, found an SX body. Um, yeah, SX is just like their strap copies. But it's a, okay. it, was an old, it was an older body. Yep. Which was, had about, you know, an inch and a half of polyurethane or whatever the whatever it is that they coated in. Yep, yep. So I got this, bought this strap for like 150 bucks or something, got the body. It was a, it was light. And over the course of maybe weeks, got rid of all this coating of this stuff. So just got down to the bare wood and just let, let it dry out for a bit and got Frank to um, put this neck on this really light older body. And wanted kind of a vintage white, but didn't want to paint it white, white and have to bother, you know, trying to relic it or do anything like that. So I had these pickup covers that I got colour matched, went to Bunnings and got them to colour match for, with some Dulux interior satin, about a half half litre of this interior satin. Cool. This really nice creamy white and painted it, painted the body in that with a brush. Nice. One coat. Yep. And because it was, because it was, it had the streaks and everything because of the brush, it looked a little aged. Yep. And now that was probably oh more than ten years ago. Now, now it, look, it looks really good. It does, man. I, I've, yeah, I'm yeah. a sucker for beat up old white strat for some reason. Mm. Um, I really want to get myself when I went to Nam, not the last one that won before. Um, I played the Friedman. S, S classic guitars there and um, they they come you can get them in different degrees of relicking oh yeah beat up white strat I want one of those with a Floyd Rose with a Floyd Man. Rose flush mount Floyd Rose so it stays in tune like a motherfucker and yeah. if I break a string I just put it back on because yes. yeah nothing worse I keep you know, I've got all these packets of strings I always break D strings D strings What's good about the Floyd, because you just, yeah, give yourself a little bit more room. You just put a bit more on it, Stuck put it on back thing, on. Yep. Off, yep. Put it back on, do it up. Yep. Man, have you heard of Lux Tone? Lux Tone guitars? I, it does ring a bell, yeah. Yeah. They do classic, like, like they're rat rods, these guitars. Cool. They do some killer Floyd Rose equipped kind of humbucker strats that look that, that look very cool relicking, man. Okay. I, yeah, I'm kind of jonesing for one of those, but Lux Tone. There's Luxtone. there's some brands that are going to be at this Gear 42 Gear Street thing that I'm going to. I'm jumping on the plane tomorrow morning, as I told you, to mm. Germany. Is Lux Tone? There's there was somebody that's going to be there that makes really cool old Strats. Ah. Could have been, it could have been them. It could have been them. Oh, you'll have to let me know, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they're rat rods, and you know a lot of people rag on Floyd Roses, but I reckon they're okay. If you get a flush-mounted one, yeah, yeah, it's not going to go out of tune. Even a floater, you know, if you set it up properly, it's okay. Dude, my Hamer, yeah. my Hamer, um, sitting back there in a guitar rack somewhere. That oh, man, that wall used to be full of amps. I don't know if you ever saw pictures. Um, I've seen pictures. Yeah, yeah, and I sold. There was a whole bunch of broken ones, and but yeah, sold a whole bunch of bunch of stuff to make it over to germany for this thing uh the 42 gear street really looking forward to that Big but call, man. Uh, that's really cool yeah yeah um but my hammer's back there somewhere in that little rack and that is just solid it's got a floyd rose but it's a mahogany body with a mape uh with a, a, a ebony fretboard and it's just solid the low end on it is what what really yeah, gets right. me yeah I uh, mm. don't know if it's the pickups that's in it. It's got those Duncan uh, parallel axis trim buckers. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It used to have a yeah, Sustainiac. They... I'm going to go grab it. It's just back here. <laughs> ah, cool, man. Wow. Put my ears back in so I can hear you. All right. Mm. This guy, this guy. That's the same as what uh, Vernon Reed used to play. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But there's a big hole in the front there. It had a Sustainiac in it, and I pulled it out because it's the old school, the old style Sustainiac, which had two nine volts. Uh, there we go, two nine volts in oh, the back. okay. And they'd go flat in an hour, and then the whole guitar would go dead. So I just ripped the bloody thing out. I want to put a new... 
the new Sustaniac in there because that was a great thing to have. But mm. yeah, this thing is just solid, man. It's a 90, about a 90 or a 91 uh, USA. Love it. Love nice. it. Nice. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's a sports car. <laughs> it's cool. I didn't play it for the longest time because um, it's got quite a thin neck. Uh, and I've gravitated towards big chunky necks over the years. Um, my Richie Cotson, I got a. If you look over my shoulder, that's a Richie Cotson Strat, which used oh, to be okay. that used to be yellow. It was a pukey yellow, and I stripped the paint off it and, and dyed it. And I've got <laughs> a Cotson Telly back there as well, and they've got huge necks, man. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, yeah. They're big. Yeah. Like a half is, a baseball bat. Isn't he a motherfucker of a player? He's great. I went and saw him a couple of years ago down when he played in Melbourne. I saw your yeah, picture with him, man. Yeah, it was good. That was I, a good night. I was devastated. I had a gig booked in Mount Isa and flights booked and everything and I couldn't get out of it. And, man, yeah, I missed out on seeing Richie Cotson when he came to Australia. But, um, oh, well, that's what happens when you play gigs and you've yeah, got bookings. What are you going to do? Yeah, yeah. you've got to honour your bookings, mate. Got to yeah. do it. Got to yeah. do it. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it was, um, he was great. Yeah, that live, what is it, live in Sao Paulo, that record? Richie uh, Cotton Bear? Yeah, yeah. Monster. Monster. Strat tones. Yeah. Killer. I'm thinking that could be what the videos that I've seen online are, t- are taken from. I think that is. I think yeah, that are. Yeah. yeah. There's a bit of stuff on YouTube yeah. and stuff. Yeah. I mean, that Strat back there, man, that I, I, I've used that in a few um, demos that I've done. That's my Stratiest sounding Strat by far. <laughs> yeah. And just that bell tone. Then it's It's made of ash. It is heavy, oh, okay. so heavy, so heavy. I'm going to go grab it too because I've modified yeah, it quite yeah. a bit. I'm going to try and unplug the headphones and have I still got you there, mate? You st- no? No sound? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. you got me, you bastard. Um... Hopefully, if anyone's listening, if they can tell me if that's made Dave go echoey. If it has, I'll put the headphones back in. But Hello, I just wanted to echo, echo, do I, do I echo. Sound like Elvis with a slap back. Hello, hello, Elvis. hello. hello. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> it wasn't that bad earlier, but anyway, um, I'm just going to go to the full screen here of me, and uh, so this had the traditional neck joint, but I saw. Um, Guthrie Govan model, and I sort of copied it off pictures. So I <laughs> scooped all that out. And this is what a heavy piece of ash, man. This, people just pick this up and go, man, that is just seriously heavy. So that used to be a pukey yellow, which you can kind of see in there still. Couldn't get to those <laughs> bits. Um, put the Damasio chop in there, chopper in there like, like Richie has. I, I wasn't that big a fan of his when I got this. I just played his guitars in um, Japan. They were everywhere in all the music stores and thought, I've got to have me one of those, man. Like, I love the big fat neck. It's just a huge big baseball bat neck. Pretty much that there doesn't really taper down much. It's just the full thickness all the way through. and Love it. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. I actually... Um, I actually feel that um, a lot of the tone is is in the neck. I reckon too. I really yeah. think that. Yeah, I don't know because yeah, that old strat neck like we were talking about before. Yeah. Um, it's just it's got this thing. It's I don't know. It, well, it just it loves that body. Yeah. You know, it didn't it didn't love the other body, but yeah. there's a combination of those two bits of wood just seem to do something in it. Yeah, it sound it's really stratty. It sounds beautiful. It's got a beautiful yeah bell like top. Yeah. You know, and still thickens up. I've got a, a, a bucker in the back of it, and it's nice and still gets nice and mid rangey and thick at the back. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yeah, that just has a, a bloom about the notes on that one. I don't know if it's the pickups. Um, mm. Yeah. I don't know what it is. It just, the notes go bowl, bowl around the front of it. It's just a, an explosion. Yeah, totally. Love it. Love it. <laughs> yeah. So what, what's your next guitar, mate? What are you jonesing on? What do you want to get? Uh, I'm still jonesing on my uh, Grubisa guitar that Frank is building. Because uh, I've got – there's another one which is maple on mahogany as well, but it's got a trem in it. So yep. it's a little different, a little bit of a different kettle of fish. But okay. it's still 
probably my actually that one it's a cherry red one is probably my number one baby animal guitar it's got the tram cleans up like a beauty it's does loud does soft does everything you know um he's building one which is a swamp ash body um a little little thinner not quite as elaborate as as the other ones yeah um like a bit of a sporty kind of model yep with a couple of um, direct mounted humbuckers in it it's gonna be great yeah and the trim and all that sort of stuff yeah hopefully i'll get it at some point in the future we'll see how we go Yeah. yeah But I'm pretty happy. I got I got some nice bits of wood, Ben. I don't I don't really, you know, I mean, I, well, I'm not a 1971 Les Paul Deluxe Gold Top would be nice, but it's not necessary. Yeah, but it'd yeah. be nice. Yeah. Watto's got a really nice Les Paul. It's uh, it's it's not a real one. It's not a authentic. <laughs> it's uh, made by. Max somebody apparently it's what Slash plays not the the main ap- appetite for destruction guitar but uh, Slash's other counterfeit guitar that he plays. Oh, okay. Um, yeah, Watto's got a sister to that at his place, and that's big and chunky. And um, yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of which, that that Telecaster of, of his man, that's that's amazing. The, uh, the Tele's great, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, the opposite of this. This one that I said was so heavy. Uh, it's a heavy ash. Um, his is just super light. I know whenever you pick it up, there's a 52 Telecaster we're talking about, by the way, folks. Um, the one mm. that I, I did some stuff with Louis Shelton and a bit of a, a tone shootout with. Um, super light, super resonant. I don't get it. Maybe it's just dried out. We're talking to uh, to somebody about that recently. They said you know the ash has dried out a lot over the years. Yeah. It's an old guitar. Yeah, yeah, it's an old piece of wood. Yeah. Know? Yep. Mate, gonna... uh, the Melbourne signature amp of yours. <clears throat> you still playing yeah, that? I, yeah, I still play that um, every so often. I mean, I use my old Marshall on the weekend. But yep. uh, this guy, uh, Don Kahinga, who um, is Southern Cross Audio, and I used to, I did a few days a week in a, in a local music store, and Don was the, the amp guy. He used to come in and try out preamp, you know, just say, hey, this is something I just knocked up at home, you know, have a bit of a look at this. Yep. And he came in with his amp. It was like far, it was a three channel. And I just fell in love with the middle channel. I said, man, if you just make one that's got that, because it cleans up, it dirts, it loves pedals. It's like, it's got a two, this wall, the one I've got now has got a clean as well, which is drivable, it's pushable. So yep. it will get, it will sort of encroach upon your, your dirt channel as well. So yeah. there's a really nice I like kind that. Of cross over there. I like that. Yeah. Yeah, I don't like completely clean. No, be sterile, some sterile. Sort of, yeah. Some sort of fur going on there somewhere. Yeah. You know? I prefer that over using a compressor if I can get it, just that bit of bit of hair around it and just wind back when I need to, but just yeah, lean into it and yeah, lean bit, into it. Give, give, give it a bit. Yeah. Yeah. I saw I saw a great photo the other day. It was on Facebook or some somewhere and it was a guitar vo- it was a strat volume knob. Yeah. And and the meme underneath it said channel switching for old guys. Yes, yes, definitely. Yeah, that's me, man. Always yeah. riding it. Yeah. Or, you know, there's your clean. There's your dirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah. So it's a it's a great amp. It's really versatile. It's 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 yeah. And and I can either use the, that with the fractal in a, in the four cable method, yep. which works great as well. Yep. Just using you know using the stuff be, uh, before it and in the in the effects loop. Works great. Yeah, it's a good amp. Yeah. I had a play of it uh, at Soundcheck when you guys were at Twin Towns a couple of years ago. And oh, yeah, uh, right. yeah, it was one of those things uh, when you said about playing Eddie Van Halen's rig and it, it still sounded like you. I was I was playing that one and it sounded like me, but a good version oh. of me. Oh, that's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good amp. If it gives you if it gives you a good version of yourself, then it's a yeah. good amp. Yeah. Yeah. Actually that yeah. that was around about the time I was having a bit of issues with my finger, so I wasn't playing guitar that much. But um Sue's was on stage and she was playing the nice the fifty two telly, I think it was, uh, mm. through a really nice amp and one of those uh, solo Dallas pedals. Solo Dallas. The solo yeah, Dallas, yeah. The yeah. Angus Young's wireless system in a pedal. So she's got her head down playing that, and I'm playing your guitar. And, um, and I was like, oh, that's a nice chord she's playing. I'm not going to play along. And I was playing along to her through your rig and your effects and everything. And it wasn't until after the show that um, she said to me, she goes, was that 
So it's like you playing earlier to, at Soundcheck. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And she goes, oh, I thought that was Dave playing. I looked up and I went, oh, hello, Dave's grown a foot. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, no, man, I really loved – that was when you got your hands back on the 64, your 64 LCS. Strat. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And um, so I was playing that. And I hadn't played that in a while. I, I remember playing that back in the 90s. Me, yeah. Me either. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I was really good to see just you in good spirits over getting that back, mate. That was great. Oh, it was, I was, yeah. You were beside was, yourself, uh, man. I was beside myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I get teary just thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So good on your Watto. Beautiful guitar, that yeah. one. Yeah, good yeah. on your Watto. Love you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, but how, hey, how good was that, that solo Dallas thing? When I'm looking sitting across and suit, you know, there's a. It's funny when you you play and your singer's guitar sound sounds better than yours. You go, man, that sounds great. Yeah, yeah it was really good. What I did lend me that, but I didn't really get to play with it. He lent me all these overdrive pedals, but I had a lot of other stuff going on at the time. I didn't really get to, to play with them that much. But uh, I must get my hands on one again and just see what it adds because mm. we all need a bit of Angus. A little bit of Angus never goes astray. Yeah, that's yeah. For sure. If anyone doesn't yeah. know what we're talking about, there's um, a pedal called the, the Solo Dallas, and a big part of Angus Young's tone since the Back in Black days was his wireless system. They were trying to record the guitars for Back in Black, and they were just scratching their heads, man. man it just doesn't sound the same you know, when I'm playing live. And the producer said, well, what's different, man? Everything's exactly the same. I just don't have my wireless. They tried plugging in his wireless in. Bam! There was that sound. So, Bingo! There yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. So somebody's put that the the compressor expander section out of that wireless system into a, into a pedal, uh, which brings all the good. So um, yeah, I'm gonna try one of those. I might have to try and get my hands on one. It's crazy, huh? Crazy mm. concept, but yeah, if yeah. it works, it works. You know. Yeah. If it sounds good, it is good. Yeah. But I, I just having a look at the chat room there. Um, Following on from Ben from Follow the Fox saying, bring up one of your other bands to the Gold Coast. Cliff Gold says, Sunny Coast 2, please. So you might have a bit of a run okay. up this way, mate. Do a tour. Yeah. Bean okay, Boy 1. Hey, hey, Dave, how's the solo stuff progressing? You've been working on some solo stuff? I've been working on some solo stuff. Yeah. It's, pro- it's, pro- it's actually the last couple of weeks it's progressed a lot, which is good. I, yes, yes. I, um, I was going to bite the bullet and sing on the – on the stuff myself, but I've decided I've, I should, f- for the benefit of the songs, as my girl says, if, if you can't do it or don't want to do it, you should outsource it. So I'm going to, I'm outsourcing the vocals. Okay. Yeah. 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 And it's, it's good. We, we're, uh, we're going into the studio Monday and we're going to put some stuff down and I'm pretty excited about it. Oh, yeah. nice. Nice. Yeah. It's pretty cool. It's coming up really good. Great. Right. There you go. Steve N, I'm assuming that's my friend Steve Norris. Uh, when I was learning the guitar in my teens, I would hear the baby animals on the radio and think, man, if I could play guitar half as good as that, I would be extremely happy. Awesome chat, guys. Thanks, Steve. Oh, thanks, Always Steve. Always been a fan. Remco, yeah, thanks, I have the ticket for you. I think Remco's talking about his trem there, talking about Floyd Roses and stuff before. Remco's a, a, a mate of mine. Uh, you actually met him at uh, Melbourne, Gu- Melbourne Guitar Show. Uh, after, oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. He's uh, designed a really cool um, tremolo that works with both headless guitars and uh, your standard ones, and it's got the well, the tuning down here, but a lot more range on it than a Floyd Rose. Uh, with a Floyd, you know, you, you've only got so, <clears throat> so much range. You, you, typically, you couldn't do a drop D on it, for instance, because you can't wind it out enough. You won't. Yeah. 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 Whereas yeah. here's really, you can got a lot of range on it. It's made for, yeah, yeah as I say, headless guitars and. Starting to get a lot of attention there. I, I do believe there's a few builders that are starting to incorporate his trem onto there. It's good That's to cool. see the good to see the local guys mm. doing well, mate. Yeah. Yeah, man. Yeah. Ah. Yeah. Oh, mate. We're getting on a bit. I got a plane we to catch in the morning. You do have a plane to catch in the morning, man. Yeah. It's really exciting. It's so good. It is, man. It is. Um <clears throat> As I said to you before, I, I thought maybe I sort of muscled my way into this thing a, a little bit over my head, the 42 Gear Street, but it's going to be great, man. I don't watch TV. I watch YouTube. Um, and to be hanging out with all the guys um, that I pretty much watch doing demos and uh, yeah, not, not all demoers. I mean, uh, Phil McKnight 
it has those great uh, know your strat, you know, five things you didn't know about your strat and five things you didn't know about the Les Paul. That'd be, that'd be interesting to, to meet him. Um, That's cool. Yeah, Glenn Fricker. I don't know if you know Glenn Fricker. Yeah, he's quite a character. Tells it like it is. Um, too many names to mention, mate. They're all great. Mr. Fastfinger. There's this cool little cartoon that I, I came across, this website, about 10 years ago. I can't believe I'm going to meet the guy. It was basically this cartoon where you got to play this character on stage, uh, on, the, on the screen. You controlled him through hitting the keys on your keyboard. And each key had this cool lick that the little character would play. And, oh, wow. um, yeah, this Mr. Fastfinger character would go and cut heads with the devil, kind of, you know, old Crossroads <laughs> style. Um, and it was Mika that played all the guitars on it. And at the time, I remember thinking, who is this Steve Vai? Because it, it sounded a hell of a lot, lot like Vai. And, and just the guitar that he had was a, a green, very much like the Vai's old green meanie. Right. And um, part of me was going, man, this might be something that Vai's doing and not telling anybody. But, um, yeah, it'd be great to – to meet him tom quayle who's a fantastic guitar player with all that legato oh, yeah. kind of stuff yeah so mm. um i feel kind of silly hanging out and playing with these guys but we're all nah, different man. one thing i've come to realize man, oh, man, we're all it. different we're all different so um i'm sure there's stuff that i could bring to it that they don't and vice versa absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, i'm looking forward to hearing that seeing the results man yeah seeing the uh the footage and stuff like that yeah. from your adventure. Yeah, I had to get really serious, good. mate. I, I, I was just when I sold my Freedman, that gave me a bit of money. And like, like I said, I had all those amps back there, my, my Port City cabs, a um, whole bunch of stuff. Had some broken yeah. Egnator gear back there. Um, but I bought myself a new camera, which I'm waving at. You're seeing me up there, but I'm actually talking to another camera down here, which is why I'm not making eye contact with you, mate. It's okay. <laughs> I told you that beforehand, <laughs> yeah. But I finally got myself a camera with an autofocus that works and I can actually manipulate from the front and just for the whole YouTubing, just make things easy. It was all Get too hard up. before. I needed the right tools, man. I needed the right yeah, tools yeah. and gear comes and goes, but I just needed the right tools and I think I've got them now. And That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really good, man. Yeah. yeah. But having said that, i got to be on a Lady plane. Brother. i got to leave at like 4.30 in the morning, so. Oh, God. <laughs> Shocker. How long is the flight? Do you, do you, do you go? I'm going to Singapore. Singapore, right? Singapore, okay. and I'm going to do. I had the choice. My friend helped me book the ticket. Sue's a bit more book smart than I am. I get very frustrated having to read all the fine print and stuff. I'm just like, oh man, just. Ah. So she's really good at that side of things, and she's like, well, you can take this flight. Leaves around about the same time, and it's only got like a, a two hour stopover. Or uh, well, this other one's an eight hour stopover in Singapore. And I went, you know what? I cannot sleep on a plane. Give me the eight-hour stopover in Singapore because that that airport there is great. Oh, so, really? Yeah, oh, yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. So I'm going to get out at Singapore for eight hours and stretch my legs, have a good feed. There's a gym. There's a sleeping lounge, all that stuff. Make some vlogs, awesome. all that kind of stuff. I yeah. Had to learn how yeah, to cool. vlog. It's funny. When I messaged – Henning about what gear I needed to take. He said, oh, just what you'd normally bring for vlogging. Vlogging, there'd be plenty of opportunities for that. Vlogging, huh? Google, Google, Google. What the fuck is vlogging? <laughs> okay, so just walk around and, yeah, that's why I got this little camera here, which is kind of cool for doing that, um, as well as doing my, my other product demos. Eight-hour stopover and then another however long. So it's a, it's a long flight, but... Yeah, it's a good big day. Yeah, yeah we've got a couple of days, days. to uh, rest up, just hang out with everybody, get to know everyone. Henning's done really good on this in that he's organized the people behind the brands, not the local sales reps. As I heard him say uh, on Tone Talk the other day, um, what's the point of lining up the German distributor of Ibanez if I get – and I hit it off famously with these guys um, through hanging out socially or whatever, and they go, yeah, man, yeah, we'll, we'll do some work together, and then I come back to Australia, and then I have to start again with – the Ibanez reps in Australia, there's no point. So that's why he's got the guys from the actual company there. The designers to a lot of the, the, the gear there as well. So, wow, okay. um, you know, when you're talking to Engel, it's the guys who design it. And, you know, Friedman, it's Dave Friedman. It's, it's who I've got to say has been the man behind my, my tone for a long time, way before there was Friedman amps. I was getting stuff mod modified by him at Rack Systems in LA. Uh, it was a little secret weapon. Now he's not such a, a secret weapon. Um <laughs> Yeah, so it's going to be cool, man. 
It could be very yeah, cool. Definitely. Yeah. Exciting. Yeah. So is there anybody else that has anything that they want to ask Dave before I round things up? We've still got a few viewers in there. Oh, cool. Nah, everyone's too scared to have a chat. That's okay. That's I think right. that I think the chat's working in real time. It should do. I'm still new to this software and trying out a few different things, but I think it's going smoothly. No, Dave, thank you so much, mate, for being a guest on here. That's um, okay. Thanks yeah. for having us. Yeah, no worries, mate. It's, it's always good, good to catch up with yeah. you anyway. I didn't get to catch yeah, up exactly. with you too much in Melbourne when I was down. What <laughs> I do want to do, mate, is um, I'm going to make a trip down to Melbourne, Sydney, that kind of thing, before too long with a few cameras and go visit some mates that have some nice vintage guitars and have a bit of a chat, like the one I did with Louis over the, over the 52 telly, just to see where that takes us. I'd, I'd love to drop in, mate, and bring a couple of cameras and have, have a chat. And, sure. Come yeah, on down. Yeah, 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 yeah we yeah. can take our time with that and then edit something together. So, you know, okay. cut out all yeah, the bullshit. Good. Yeah. Uh, big thanks to Anything. you both from Ben down there. So glad you're watch, still watching there, Ben. It's uh, it's nice to have know somebody's there and that the chat works thanks. without <laughs> being in, in YouTube. Yeah. So awesome. Dave, thank you very much. Thanks, Folks, Rick. if you've got any other guests that you wouldn't mind me trying to get on here or uh, any suggestions leave them in the comments below and um i want to say thanks again to dave and i'm going to bid you all a good night bye now <laughs>